If you want to know what the best camera of the year was, if you want to know what the sharpest lens of 2020 was, then I'm afraid you're in the wrong place. That's not quite what this video is all about. Instead, I wanted to present a video that is about my personal favorite gear of the year. The things that I've used the most throughout the year, the things that I've found most practical, that have been really useful, that have helped me make better videos or take better photos. Now, um, some of the gear I'm going to feature you would have seen me using in some of the videos and some of the gear you wouldn't because it's gear that I use behind the scenes but I still think it may be of interest to some of you. This is not going to be a top 10 countdown although I have saved the best till last and in this video I'm also going to talk about that piece of gear that I brought that I ended up using pretty much the least. So I hope you enjoy the video. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I upload weekly photography tutorials. I share tips and tricks. Occasionally I do gear reviews as well. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. In this video, I'm talking about my favorite gear of the year. And I wanna kickstart by talking about this. This is a filter. This more specifically is the Nissi Natural Night Filter and is designed for night photography and astrophotography. Now, the idea behind this filter is it corrects light. It corrects colors at nighttime. Often there's a lot of light pollution. This is designed to block the light wavelengths that cause light pollution. And I have to be honest, I've used this quite a bit over the last few months, and I've been really impressed with the results. The colors are fantastic. The build quality of this um, lens is great, as you would expect from Nissi. So the quality of the glass is fantastic. It's got uh, multi coatings to help reduce um, flare and reflections. And um, this particular filter is an 82 millimeter filter. So this fits my biggest lens. A good tip when buying filters is always to buy the biggest because you can use adapters to downsize but you can't upsize so um, I do plan on doing a review video on this in the coming months so if you'd like to see that give this video a thumbs up and I've also got some other Nissi products that I want to share with you and review in the new year um, but to start things off the Nissi natural night filter really impressive it Next, I wanna talk about camera bags. Now, this is the Think Tank Airport Essentials. I've had this backpack now for some years. I have mentioned it and talked about it in previous videos. It is an absolutely fantastic backpack. You can get a ton of gear in here. It fits um, in the overhead locker if you're going on a plane, hence the name Airport Essentials. And it's been my bag of choice for many years, but this year I changed to another bag. Now, I was looking around for a, better, a bigger bag for a while. I couldn't find anything that I really liked until somebody turned up to one of my workshops with this. Now this looks similar, but it's bigger. This is the airport commuter. So again, this is another think tank bag. It's similar to the previous bag, but it's bigger. Most importantly, it's a lot deeper. So you can put your lenses in um, face down rather than laying them on their side. It's a great bag. Uh, it's got much better padding on the straps than the previous bag. It really is great. And I'm a big fan of think tank because they just make really good quality products. There's tons of different bags to choose from, um, but I just keep coming back to think tank. And I was really pleased when that guy turned up at my workshop because it gave me an opportunity to have a good look around the bag and um, as soon as I as soon as I saw it I placed an order and got one of these so this has been my favorite bag of the year the think tank airport commuter now I'm a long time Nikon user and as a result have a bunch of Nikon cameras and lenses and Nikon just like Sony, Canon, Fujifilm have really now embraced the mirrorless system. So a couple of years ago I picked up the Nikon Z6. It's a camera that I love. I use it almost every day. I'm using it now to record this video. Since then of course Nikon have released some other camera bodies, the Z6 Mark II, the Z7 Mark II, the Z5 and so on. And They've also released a bunch of lenses to complement the Z system, which is their mirrorless system. Now, I already owned a wide angle lens, but it was a bit tired and a bit old, and I was using that with the adapter, but Nikon this year released their Z system wide angle lens, which is the 14 to 30 millimeter F4S, um, and I picked one up. It was getting good reviews. I really wanted a wide angle lens for my Z6, and 
it's been great. I've used it quite a bit this year. I've taken photos at night with it. I've done landscape photography with it. I've done all sorts. I've featured it a few times in the video. And here it is. Um, it's a great lens, great quality, uh, minimal distortion. And this lens definitely deserves to be in my list of gear of the year. Now, whilst talking lenses, this was my second lens purchase of the year. This is the Nikon Nikkor 85mm f1.8 prime lens. Now, 85mm is a lens focal length that is commonly used for portrait photography. So this lens, um, although you can, you can use it for whatever you like, is actually really great for portrait photography in the way that it compresses perspective and blurs backgrounds. The Again, the quality of this lens is fantastic. I absolutely love it. Maximum aperture f1.8 gives a nice shallow depth of field and the quality of the bokeh or the blur in the background is really, really great. Um, this past few months, I've started running portrait photography courses here in Brisbane, which is something I used to do a few years ago. And after a break, I have brought them back. I've really enjoyed doing them. And partly it was that that inspired me to pick up this lens. This is quite a new purchase. I've not had it very long, but I've really enjoyed using it, been getting some great results. And this is a lens I think I'm gonna be using a lot moving into the new year. Next up is lighting from LoomCube. These are LED lights. This is the LoomCube 2, this is the Panel Mini, and this is the Panel Go, and they're simply LED lights, but they are really versatile and really useful. LoomCube got in touch with me a few months ago and asked me if I would like to test and review their products, uh, and I did, and there's a full review video that I made. I'll put a link up here and also in the description below the video that you can check out. Um, I absolutely love these. I've used them loads to do portraits, product photography, I've done some nighttime photography, painting with light, they're really very versatile. This one I'm running at 1%, if I increase the brightness you'll see just how bright these can go. They're absolutely fantastic. Now when I review a product, and I think this is important to say, I always say to people in my videos, if I love something I'm going to tell you, but equally if I don't like something I'm definitely going to tell you. Thankfully with LoomCube lights, I love them, they're great. And I can honestly say that since receiving these, these have had a permanent place in my camera bag. Now the next bit of gear I want to talk about, you've probably never seen in any of my videos previously because this is a bit of gear that gets used behind the scenes. This is the Atomos Ninja V or Ninja 5, which is a 5 inch 4K HDR monitor. It's absolutely fantastic. It can also be used to record as well. So basically the way this works is I take an HDMI lead out of here, I plug it into the side of the camera and then as an alternative to using the camera's LCD or the view finder, I can display uh, my image on this beautiful high quality monitor. Plus, if you add an SSD drive to the back, you can record your photos or your video footage direct to the drive. Now these are very popular with filmmakers and I'm no filmmaker but I do make videos for YouTube and that is honestly the reason why I brought this. Personally, I don't get a lot of benefit from owning this and this was pretty expensive, but you guys do, but you might not realize it. This gives me the ability to record live from the camera and show you things that I could normally see that you can't. For example, I recently reviewed the Canon EOS R5 mirrorless camera, a great camera, and I wanted to show you some features like eye detection. This enabled me to record straight from the camera and show you exactly what I'm seeing behind the camera camera functions, camera settings, eye detection, everything. It gives you an insight into what's going on behind the scenes. So this is really, really useful. I've been using it quite a bit this year and I'm gonna use it a lot next year to hopefully make better videos for you guys. Now the next bit of gear that I wanna talk about is actually this protective cage that this monitor is sitting in. So I just talked about this. This is the Atomos Ninja 5 uh, monitor. And um, this is sitting inside a cage that is made by a company called Small Rig. Now I purchased this uh, to, as a way of protecting this monitor because as I mentioned before, it's actually quite expensive. And it's absolutely fantastic. It's custom built to fit this monitor snugly. Um, and I've also purchased one for my Nikon Z6 
6. So the camera that's recording my video now is actually sitting in a similar cage. Now with these cages, they have all these different holes drilled in so you can attach them to things like tripods and you can attach other accessories. So this again is made by Small Rig. This is called an articulating arm. And um, I've used this quite a bit as well because you can attach loads of things to it like lighting or maybe a flash unit or another monitor. So you can uh, articulate and move this arm in any direction you like. Um, and then what you can do is you can attach things like uh, maybe a loom cube light or a flash unit or another monitor or camera or whatever you like. So Small Rig makes some really good accessories, which for me are more about protecting my camera and my monitor and my other gear than anything else. But this tiny little thing is really useful. Now the next bit of kit that I wanna show you that I've been using quite a bit this year is this. This is the Cheyenne SmoothX smartphone gimbal. A gimbal is designed to keep your footage nice and steady. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. It's super small and really compact when it's packed down. You can pick these up for about $70 US. Um, so they're really affordable. And I use it a lot for capturing behind the scenes footage, maybe for recording um, clips for Instagram. If you're doing Instagram stories, for example, quick double click on the button and you're now shooting vertical for stories. Um, clip, double clip back and you're shooting regular horizontal or landscape footage. It's really easy to use, it's really versatile, it's really cheap, and it's been a lot of fun. I've been using this quite a bit. It's the Cheyenne SmoothX. Okay, so the next bit of gear that I wanna share with you, I nearly didn't include in the list because I've only had it, strictly speaking, a few weeks, but it is amazing, and therefore I think it's worth a mention. And it's my smartphone. This is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now, I don't rush out and buy every single iPhone as soon as it comes out. Generally speaking, I usually replace my phone every three years. But it was time for a replacement, and I was very excited about the Pro Max in particular because of the camera features. Now, this phone has four cameras. There's the selfie camera, there's another three on the back. And what you've got here is a wide lens, an ultra wide lens, and a 2.5 times telephoto lens as well. Now, the lens to get excited about, or certainly the lens that I'm excited about, is the wide lens, which has a sensor that is 47% bigger than a standard iPhone sensor. And that's a big deal, because the bigger the sensor, the better the camera can perform in low light. Plus, that sensor, and that sensor only, has IBIS built in, which is in-body image stabilization, which helps keep your footage steady. So great for videos. Now, I've only had this a few weeks, but I I've been absolutely blown away by the quality of the footage coming out of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It's amazing, not just the photos, but also the videos. Plus, coming soon, Apple are gonna make RAW available as well. So we'll be able to take pictures in the RAW format. And I'm really excited about seeing what that can do. So look, I included this in the list of things that I love this year because this is the camera that's always in my pocket. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I wanted to save the best till last. So now I'm gonna reveal what was this single photography related item that I, I enjoyed using the most in 2020. Well, I wish I could show you, but I can't because I don't actually own one of these. I'm talking about the EOS R5 mirrorless camera from Canon. Now a few months ago I was lucky to get my hands on one of these and I was lucky to test it extensively over a period of a few weeks and this camera absolutely blew me away. I have to hand it to you Canon, you've made an amazing camera. Now as you know I'm a Nikon user. Now I can tell you if I hadn't invested so much in Nikon cameras and Nikon lenses over the past few years I would probably own an R5 right now. It is that good. It has an impressive list of features, uh, including 45 megapixel sensor, full frame of course, 8K recording, 20 frames a second, amazing um, focusing abilities. It seems to tick all the boxes. It was a camera that I loved using, and I did a full review video, which I'll put a link to up here and also in the description below, so you can check it out. So look, I hope I'm not disappointing you with this one, but I'd love to show you the R5 but I don't because it was on loan. It's sadly gone back to Canon Australia, but it was without a doubt, hands down, the bit of photography gear that I liked using the most this year. So you've made it to the end of the video. Now it's time for me to reveal the photography item that I've used the least this year, and it is 
This, this is the GoPro Hero 9, GoPro's latest action camera. Now I've owned three GoPros, including this one, and they've all been fantastic. And this is a great action camera. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It's got some really cool features. The image stabilization is amazing. It's got a, a screen on the back and also a screen on the front. You can switch the lenses out. It's got some great features, but I've hardly used it. It's sat on the shelf collecting dust. Um, and that's mainly because shortly after this was released, the iPhone 12 came out and I got the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which has that amazing stabilized sensor, great um, camera. It, it's just so good. I'm much more likely to grab that than grab something like this. Of course, there's things you can do with a GoPro that you wouldn't dare do with an iPhone, but the iPhone is amazing and it's the camera that's always in your pocket. So sadly, the GoPro Hero 9 has sat on the shelf collecting dust, but I will be using it quite a bit, hopefully over the Christmas holidays, and maybe I'll get around to using it a bit more in the new year. I'm not saying it's not a great camera, it is a great camera, but it is the item that I purchased that I probably could have done without in 2020. So I've really enjoyed sharing with you my favorite gear of the year. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps my channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos. I put new videos out every single week. And of course, they're all designed to help you take better photos. You can leave your comments, suggestions, and questions down below. And I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya, bye.